So hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Today, we're actually going to talk a lot about politics and electric cars. I've got Mike Murphy here. He's from an organization called evpolitics.org. And Mike, great to uh, have you here talking with me about all this political shenanigans that's going on with electric vehicles. <laughs> Yeah, no, I tell the audience when you hear politics, don't shut this off. It's, it's going to be interesting because, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a political consultant. I'm originally from Detroit, grew up in Michigan, did all John Engler's campaigns out there and have worked uh, for Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mitt Romney, Jeb Bush, all over the country doing politics. But although my lifetime miles per gallon average as a good Detroit motorhead has been about eight miles for the gallon and the kind of cars I've had, I went kind of nuts for EVs. I like quiet, I like fast, and I like not sending money to the, you know, the Saudis. So I became kind of a nut for EVs, and I just got mad at all the Republican bashing of EVs, because I think they're good for American manufacturing, and we're in a race with the Chinese. So I started up evpolitics.org, breaking the golden rule of every political consultant. Never give your money to a candidate or cause, because we see how it's often badly spent. But I did. I funded it, and we did a big poll to figure out the problem, and now we're we're trying to infect that IP into the conversation, try to help the North American automakers fix, in my view, some of the mistakes they've made marketing EVs. Um, who funds you? You, you mentioned you just got me. Some I'm the idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're, I finally got my tin cup out because I paid for the polling and the launch. Um, we got some press off the data, and if you want, I can show you a few slides. I think I've sent you some of it. Um, but, I, but I'm not trying to fund a little money now. We're not Republican or Democrat. I'm a Republican traditionally. But the big problem in the polling, so I should probably explain, we polled national poll, like a campaign style poll of voters, but we only did voters with a household income of 50000 a year and up because we wanted to capture essentially the whole new car market. So we gave away a third of the electorate. In other words, we have two thirds of the people who will vote likely in the next presidential this year. But we have, we think, just about all the new car buyers. You know, there are some people who have a low income but have other may buy a new car. And we asked a lot of questions about EVs, what you like, what you don't like, you know, all that sort of stuff. But we broke it out by what kind of party you're in. And we found two different planets. I'll, I'll give you one quick example. We asked about, what you, are you mostly favorable, mixed, or mostly unfavorable about? And we tried different brands. You know, the Ford Motor Company. Ford does great, about 70% favorable, about 26% unfavorable. That's a great ratio. And the difference between Republicans and Democrats is very, very small. We asked about all electric car brands. The Republicans broke into a riot. They gave a 9% favorable and a 49 unfavorable. That's minus 40 points of what we'd say in politics underwater. Well, the Democrats are another planet. They're net positive. So the problem is the EVs have become a political thing for Republicans. And Republicans are 40% of the population of the country with an income over 50,000 a year. Democrats are 36, and then independents are the rest. So 40% of the potential market in the future for EVs is hostile to them on political reasons. And, and you add to that the new mandates for 2023, we did the math. We took the current market share of EV and plug-in hybrids by Republican and Democrat. And we extrapolated it forward. To get to the 56% battery, 2023 EPA hope, plus another 13 they want in plug-in hybrids, you have to get 127% of Democrats to buy an EV. So every Democrat has to go out and buy one EV and a quarter of another one because Republican is going to be down around 20% if we don't fix it, what we call the red wall marketing problem. And it, you know, we have a lot of polling, a bunch of it's on our website, evpolitics.org. A lot of it's the environment. When you ask people what they like about EVs, Republicans and Democrats look the same on not paying for gas, fun to drive. Uh, but when you get to save the planet, they go in different directions. You know, so I think one thing the European and South Korean and Japanese car leadership they made the assumption that like in their countries, everybody agrees on climate change. So, you know, sell climate change. Well, not here. We're, we're ornery Americans. We got about 58% who love the fact that EVs are good for climate change and 42% who say, hell no, stop shoving it down my throat. So every time you see a white polar bear, you're, you're telling 40, 45% of your market to get lost. I'm here to irritate you. And I, th I think that's that's been the problem.
So you, and price. You, you think the division politically comes down to climate change, not necessarily EVs. Yeah. Well, there's a Biden aspect, too. You know, we're, we're so tribal now that if Biden wants it, I'm against it or if Trump wants it, I'm against it. Um, but the main attribute where the numbers are a, an ocean apart are all the environmental stuff. I mean, what I would tell auto marketers is if if you're part of the 58 percent that thinks EVs are very good for climate change and you care about climate change, you already want an EV. Now, maybe you live somewhere where you're worried about range. Range is a concern, charging anxiety. The main complaint those voters have is they're too expensive. It's price. But you don't have to hit them over the head with the environmental stuff. They've already figured that out. On the other hand, when you hit the, the 42% who don't want to hear about climate change over the head of environmental stuff, they get really pissed. And then EVs become a pinata. They can trash. And that's an incentive for the Republican politicians to pile on. And it becomes a bad feedback loop. It's the attributes of the vehicles that move the iron, particularly of ours. So what you're saying is to automakers is stop talking about the environment with your electric cars. Yeah, you won that battle. Environmentals love electric cars. They want a cheaper price. So you got to beat BYD to that, you know, or or we're going to have a lot of green environmentalists driving Chinese made cars. So I, and I think they figured that out. They're smart people. But the environmental thing is no longer a buying advantage. It's a polarizer. It narrows the market for EVs. It doesn't widen them. The, the other great thing we found out if we ask people, do you have a friend or relative who owns an EV? If they said yes to that question, on every measure, they're more pro EV. You know, even Republicans, if, if they have a friend, they've heard good things, basically, you know, three to one ratio. If they don't know anybody with an EV and they're imagining, then they're, you know, terrible Democrat mobiles. I don't want one. They explode. You know, all the uh, everything bad happens. So if I ran a Ford store somewhere, you know, or a VW store or anything, I, I keep a couple EVs around. I let people take them for four days for a hundred bucks or something and play with them. Because uh, boy, oh boy, that works better. Than it, I, I, it, you ask me, uh, spend fifty million on straight up advertising for an EV, or fan them out to two hundred dealers and let them have play inventory that you burn up with miles, but people taste. I, I'd spend the fifty on the on the demo cars in a nanosecond because that's the most effective thing. If you have friend or if you played with one, you're much more likely to like it. Hey, look, that's how I changed my mind. Was you know not not driving around the block in one, but spending a week right. in one. That's what changed my mind on them. But, you know, how do you change people's minds? Can you change people's minds? I mean, you know, you know, the people who are dead set against EVs, they're dead set against it. As I describe them, you can have my internal combustion engines when you peel my cold, dead fingers <laughs> off it. Yeah, no, there's some of that. I mean, we, we had an interesting question. We did, we did the old polling trick of agree, disagree with this statement. EVs are good for the environment. EVs are a liberal myth. If I buy an EV, my friends will think I'm weird. You know, a hundred of them. One of the best ones is agree or disagree with this. EVs are the future. And I guess one day I'll probably be driving one. You know, the inevitability thing. 44% of Republicans agreed with that. 56% of all consumers agreed with it. So you're not too far from half the market being open-minded to EVs. Now, on the Democratic side, 80% of the market's wide open. But they're going to run out of Democrats. You know, they're, they're 36% of the market. Independents are kind of in the middle. They're, they're not as hostile as Republicans, but they're not as, you know, they're kind of like, they're a blend. So half the independents are secret Republicans and half are secret. They just like to say they're independent. So I... There's going to be a hardcore third that never does. I, I, one vehicle I'm watching in the market, and I don't know the pricing, but boy, I think it was a smart vehicle, Stellantis with the Ram hybrid. Because you can run that thing around town and essentially own an EV, and you got to tow something or go long distance, you you got torque and range. That may create a lot of converts, you know, if, if they can price it right and move it in, in, in wonder, some Republican like areas. It. As you know, look, uh, pick, full-size pickup buyers are the most conservative in the market. They are the most anti-EV people there are. Yes. They may like that there's a, a piston engine range extender in there. I'm not convinced at all that they're going to go for a truck like that. I think in our polling, first of all, if you drive a pickup truck, you're 60, 40 on the, on the global warming is a big problem. And you're 60, it's overhyped by the media. So there's no environmental market with big pickup truck drivers. Now you have some in like, you know, Orange County, California, who just drive it as a style choice, but they're not hauling anything. And, they, you know, they've sold some here. You see a lot of Rivian pickup trucks, stuff like that. But the numbers aren't huge for such a 
a big, big market. So you're right. You, you've got the most headwinds there. You know, one of the best hits is how'd you like to save two thousand dollars a year in gas? Most most people have no idea what they spend on gas on an annual basis, and it quickly crosses two thousand bucks. California, it's more because we charge you know like gold dust money for gas. We have huge gas taxes and all kinds of problems. You can see seven dollar gas driving around L.A. on occasion, and that was one of the things that and taking one for a few days is what turned me into an EV person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you're right. It, it, it it's the hardest market. But in some markets, if you're doing 30%, you're doing great because you can dominate other markets at 70. But as long as Republicans have a red wall ideological barrier to these things, it's damn hard to ever get the 50% market share, let alone the 60% Biden you know, right, right. Uh, guys want. I, I heard somebody, uh, a very intelligent person say that you cannot change people's minds, but you can get them to agree on certain points. Can you get yeah. the anti EV crowd to agree on enough points that maybe they would consider buying one? I think so. I, I think you really can make progress. If 44% think it's inevitable, it's 57% of all voters think so. They're, you know, so they're running 13 points behind. But if we got Repubs to 44, 50%, it would be a home run. It would make a lot of those targets possible. You know, what you learn in political campaigns is you go at them sideways. The frontal assault barely does any good for anybody but the defender. So, you know, I, I got some static from some of the environmental mobility groups, very nice static. They're sweet people. Like, what do you mean environments of anchor? We, we, that's what it's all about. We got to hit them over the head with the environment. I said, look, if, if you're in this to take carbon emissions away to save the planet, you don't have to get Bubba to put a save the whale sticker next to the NRA sticker on the truck, Okay. You've got to convince him that zero to 60, he's in an electric rocket ship and he doesn't have to send 2,000 or in a pickup truck more to Saudi Arabia. And it's made by most of the time by North American workers. So go at him sideways. I, you know, I'd be putting stone cold Steve Austin uh, in an electric car and I'd have him win a casual, you know, red light drag race with some guy in a, in a, in a, in a challenger or something. You know, I, I I flip the table and sell the attributes. We don't get them all, but boy, there's another 15 points of market. And the other last thing, and I got a knitting, I've known him through politics, Secretary Buttigieg, who kind of gets it. Um, and they're worried about Nevi because, you know, they send all the money to the states and the states are doing poetry contests. They're not building any charging stations. I think the Nevi thing needs to be evolved because the biggest hole is you're you're in a larger city. You're in your late twenties or early thirties. You got a pretty good career. You want an EV, but you can't do home charging in a in an apartment building, even if you're in a million dollar condo, which there are a ton of because nobody can afford a single family house in the LA's and Chicago. So they're in buildings. The NEV money ought to be paying landlords to put an overnight 50 amp charger in. Uh, because that life, when you've got a home charger and an EV, it's really good. Yeah, I mean I so we have a house in New Hampshire for the summer. I live in Los Angeles with my family. We spent a month out there. I got tired of Hertz charging me $400,000 to rent a car for a month up there because, they, you know, they soak the out-of-staters. So I bought a used Tiguan at the local rural VW dealer, and I drove that for two years. So it drove me crazy to have a car in a garage and let most of the year on a charge. So, just to, so I take it in for an oil change, and the guy says, you know, I can't sell these ID4s because there's no fast charging north of Manchester. It's killing me. I got one right here. I got to make my VW quota. Biden will give you a 7,500. There's no sales tax in New Hampshire because you own property. You can title it at that house. And I'll give you 10 grand off the goddamn thing and buy you lunch if you're taken. So I buy it. And I, I saw so it's titled New Hampshire. I drove it across the country this summer. I wrote a big sub stack about it with CCS charging. None of this easy Tesla life for me. I wanted to see what it was like. And I'm happy to say I made it. I didn't have to murder anybody. I didn't get in any knife fights to charge. I had some bumps along the way. At a, I'm in the middle of Cleveland at an EV co station, and, and the whole city power goes down. And the thing won't let go of the nozzle because, you know, what I do, call the mayor. Uh, so, you know, and, and that, but that's taught me that it, what the market research tells us that charging anxiety is real. But if you can get people to be able to, in multifamily, you know, nice condos and stuff, to be able to, afford a 500 buck charger and the landlord does the power it's a game changer uh right now in la if you live in an apartment that may cost or a condo may cost you a million bucks you got a good income you really want an ev you're 31 
and you go buy your Tesla or whatever, better with Teslas and charging and NACs will help over time. But most, if you're CCS and you're Hyundai Iconic, uh, you're driving to the Walmart and there are 20 cars in line and half the chargers aren't gonna work over Electrify America. So if we don't fix the multifamily charging, and that's where the feds ought to be pouring dough, I think. Uh, that's going to be the other big problem. Price and the charging range worries are the two big things holding everybody except Republicans back. Republicans are being held back by this is some Biden thing, shoving it down my throat, liberal and viral mobile, my friend. We asked this, well, do your friends think? And, you know, will they think you're weird or something? They're probably going to run 20 point higher. You know, where they think you made a smart decision. Democrats, 30 point higher. So it's cultural. And the auto companies aren't used to selling against culture. They're used to saying, hey, you can fit three baby bottles in the glove compartment. You know, they, they, all the attributes, and they're great at it. But, but what's happened is the EV market has been put into Venus, which has its own gravity based on party. So, so you know, I'm hey, just so, giving polling data away to help. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk November election. How do you think EVs are going to play a role in the election? Well, so I, the other thing we're doing is we're setting up uh, which a very common organization called a C4. And what a C4 can do is go out. They can't say vote for Charlie or vote against Biden or vote for Trump. No, no vote for anybody. But they can push issues. The Sierra Club is a C4. The NRA is a C4. There are a million of them. Well, we're setting up one, a very simple plan. You look at a presidential election, every political operative knows it really boils down to five or six states. They, they're going to decide because of the Electoral College vote. We know California's going to be Democrat. We know Utah's going to be Republican. We're not sure what Michigan, Georgia, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and maybe Nevada and Arizona are going to be. They, right. They're going to decide. So I, I took a look at this huge EV spending on manufacturing jobs. The best thing to happen in Georgia since the cotton gym. I mean, that, it's that was incredible. going to be one of my questions. Does putting EV plants yeah. and battery plants in red states make a difference? I think it does. Um, if you look at the two states that are the biggest in EV capital spending for factories and all that, it's Georgia, number one, Michigan, number two. Both are critical swing states. So what we're going to do with the C4, and I'm trying to raise money for this. The other nice thing about C4 is you don't disclose your donors. So you don't get a call from the labor union or your brother-in-law, the Republican. If you're a corporation, you're not pushing one candidate. But we are going to use the money, particularly in Michigan and Georgia, to make the EV jobs famous. It, it is not a surprise that the conservative governor of Georgia, who's very shrewd, Brian Kemp, is not one of these Republicans trashing EVs. He knows Georgia's won the lottery. Tennessee governor knows the same thing, though he's not a swing state. So what but we want to do is take- But not Virginia. Pardon? Youngkin in Virginia yeah. said, no no battery plant for me. Not None of this- Yeah, Chinese yeah. Stuff. He's, uh, yeah we're, we're seeing how long he lasts in politics. He was the first world. There used to be a governor down in Ohio called uh, uh, Governor Rhodes, who was reelected 20 times. He always had the same slogan, Rhodes, jobs, and progress. Nobody could beat him. The fundamentals work. Every political spot I've ever made in Michigan, where you know I've done a lot of races, in Georgia, where I've done races, everywhere. Whenever you say jobs, you see a stock footage of a bunch of sparks flying, manufacturing. Most voters, prefer, they think manufacturing are the best jobs. So our theory is simple. We're, nobody knows about all this investment in those states. We're going to make the investment famous. We're not pushing EVs. We're just making these are the thousands of great jobs that pay well. We're going to try to peel off some younger UAW members, by the way, who see the world a lot differently than the guys who have five years left for the great pension. The younger guys are worried and there's an EV future for them. And the more popular we make this manufacturing stuff, the harder it is for politicians to bash EVs. I want to disincentivize them because I don't want, if Trump wins, I don't want the talk in Washington among all the politicians who tend to be anecdotal evidence people. Wow, bashing EVs won Georgia and Michigan. Trump won the presidency. So I want to try to change the incentives there. And that's the other big project we're doing mm -hmm. uh, at, at uh, evpolitics.org. And I'm getting some pretty good response on that. It's very surgical, but I think it'll help. You know, we've seen a change on in attitudes on hybrids. If you go back 20, 24 yeah. years, if you go back to the year 2000, when hybrids were really just starting to come in, uh, Republicans were dead set against hybrids. You know, anybody yeah. who's skeptical of climate change was like, this is garbage. What do you need a hybrid for? And now that they see or believe that EVs are getting shoved down their throat, they're very pro-hybrid. 
Yeah, no, it, it, there's no intellectual honesty to it. Though I tell you another fun thing in the polling: you go to the the Washington Republican think tank, and I'm a lifelong conservative Republican, so this stuff drives me crazy, which is why I'm doing this. I, I want the market to decide, but the better vehicle ought to win. The they're all about all oh, the subsidies, like the senator from Iowa, Joni Ernst, Republican, and nice. I know her. But she did a little thing all about ED size. Oh, wait a minute, you're from Iowa, ethanol. You're pretty boy Floyd in subsidies over there. You're talking about parking tickets for this, and this actually creates jobs. You guys burn $100 bills every nine seconds there with the ethanol subsidy. But they all say the subsidies are bad. In the poll, when we talk to rank and file Republicans, they like getting money back from the government in a subsidy when you buy an ED more than the Democrats did. Because we're a bunch of greedy bastards for the Republican Party. It wasn't that, it was like five points. But, you know, these think tanks are speaking for themselves. Mm-hmm. People are more than happy to get a little money back from Uncle Sam to buy a car. They don't have to pay for gas. So we got to move the debate to vehicle attributes and get it off. You get a white polar bear sticker if you save the planet along with Bernie Sanders because Republicans aren't buying it. Hey, what is your show uh, polling show about Elon Musk? You know, now Elon is being yeah. perceived as very right wing uh, and. And he's turning off a lot of liberals. They, I, I know people who are interested in an electric car. They will not buy a Tesla simply because of Elon. But has, ha, and, and I'm not saying that Elon has gone off the, the right end deep end. I'm just saying that's the perception that's out there. But has yeah, that totally. moved the needle with conservatives? Not in terms of agreeing with him, but in terms of thinking, yeah, I want to get an EV. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. It's the biggest butterfly or caterpillar to butterfly thing I've ever seen in politics. Is, can I put a slide up? Is that okay? Because I've got an Elon slide. I, I don't know if you've got control on it, but you send us that. And as we edit this interview, I'll put it up. Oh, okay, perfect. So we asked people two questions about Elon. We couldn't resist. One was agree or disagree. Elon Musk is a good ambassador for electric vehicles. Among Democrats, 66% disagree. Two to one. And, and this guy invented the modern EV market. And now, you know, so the EV people, among Republicans, it's 61% agree. So Elon could be Nixon to China. He's very popular with people who doubt EV. So if he could get focused on a message, he could do some good there. The other, we asked the same question. Elon Musk, are you good or, uh, is he a good ambassador for EVs? Agree, disagree. If you say that climate change is a serious problem, of the climate change is a serious problem. People say he's a lousy ambassador. They disagree. Only 42%. Now, over on the other people who say climate change is overhyped and not that big a deal, Elon is 67% a good ambassador for EVs. So it's totally flipped. So on one hand, the argument is, wow, if you're the CMO of Tesla, you're probably starting to drink pretty heavily because he's an anchor on you. And we see that in the sales figures now. It's all over Wall Street. They're kind of blaming them. And there's some truth to that in the marketplace. You know, for the the most Tesla-friendly group, he's Sean Hannity now. On the other hand, those skeptical Republicans like him, so he can get a nose in the tent to make the case. You know, um, there's even a funny spot for, you know, I'm an ad guy originally, so I talk in ad, where we have Stone Cold Steve Austin and his electric blowing somebody away, and he says, not bad, and Elon's in the other seat. You know, and you know, it's it's a very country music blaring. Uh, you get twenty million bucks of free press for that. So yeah, he could be put to work. But the problem with Elon is, you know, he's not a dog; he's a cat. He's going to go do Elon stuff, and there ain't no power to stop him. But yeah, yeah, he's a uh, he's a big deal over in that 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 EV skeptic world now. So just sort of to wrap up here, what you have found is that. Uh, EV, and we all know this, right? EVs are politicized. I mean, it, it's blue oh, and red, yeah. no, no question about it. But what you're saying is stop selling the whole climate benefit of it and start focusing yeah. on the attributes. You never go to a gas station again. Boy, right. does this thing get up and go. And right. and it's smooth. It's quiet. It's a better driving experience. Yeah, what, what you're saying is if automakers concentrate on that, they can start flipping people who are against EVs. Right. On the positive attributes, there's very little difference between Republicans and Democrats. They work around the right. Well, the minute they get to the politics of it, then they're in trouble. The attributes do great. Uh, the best way is to have a friend with one. So they got to get demo vehicles out there like crazy and you will sell more EVs. 
Well, you know, Mike, I've always said, if you want to sell cars, you tell your customers it's going to make their teeth whiter, their smile brighter, and their <laughs> sex life better. That's how you sell right. cars. <laughs> right. You know, it, there's an old saying in advertising, don't sell the drill, sell the hole it makes. <laughs> How it makes your life better. No gas, fast acceleration, it's quiet. And by the way, other than tires on occasion, not a lot of maintenance. So your your local guy at the triple markup transmission shop is going to hate you because you're never going to see him. Mike Murphy, thanks so much for your insights on the politicization of electric vehicles. Thank you, John.